Joining us in the studio now is George Bosworth. George is co-founder and vice president of Digitalk. Next to George, Bruce Newberger with the Whitewater Group. Jan? Bruce, before we even get started, there's two types of uh, object oriented programming languages. One is the sort of the pure type, the one that was built from ground up to be object oriented, such as yours and such as the uh, small talk. The other is the um, enhanced procedural languages. Um, for your type, which is built from the ground up to be object oriented, is it easier for a novice who doesn't have the background of procedural languages or is it still better for a uh, existing programmer? Well, that all depends on the person's background, but we found that if someone completely jumps feet first into object oriented programming, it's uh, sink or swim, and most often they swim. <laughs> George, let's get started. Actor now, and the new version of Actor 2.0, and tell us how that's different from what we've just seen here in terms of an OOP language. Okay, well, it's very similar the way we use object oriented programming. It's the environment that's somewhat different. We run in Microsoft Windows, mm -hmm. which can generally run on a smaller machine, and uh, our syntax is a little more traditional. Uh, so C and Pascal programmers uh, can find it very readable. All right, run, run us through Actor 2.0 here and show us how we would use that. Okay, sure. This is our new version. And uh, it comes up right in Windows. It is itself a Windows program. And uh, we can see the, uh, the Actor introduction screen here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we can actually go into this workspace and start executing code. Okay, what, are we, what are we looking at in this workspace? Okay, we're looking at some code that creates a new window. Okay. This is called an edit window. We press one line. Uh, we have one line of code to create it and one line to show it on the screen. Mm -hmm. And it can be resized and typed into. And you can see that we're about halfway to a word processor here. And this is something that comes predefined in Actor mm -hmm. right out of the box. If we uh, shrink the window down a bit, you can see that it even has scrolling. One of the nice diagnostic tools in uh, Actor is what we call the inspector. And we can actually highlight the name of that uh, window object and click on inspect. And that will bring up the inspector, which shows us all of the data that actually makes up that window. Mm -hmm. For example, its location rectangle on the screen, its caption, and even the text that I just typed into it. Mm -hmm. So I can learn a lot about the objects in my system at any one time. The next thing I'm going to do is create another type of window called a chart window. And this is a little bit more sophisticated of a program, and it shows business charts on the screen. Um, we can open a file just as we would in any other application. And this is a chart file in particular, and this shows a vertical bar chart. And we can change this to a pie chart, and you can see that it resizes and redraws and uh, is quite colorful. And this is a standard type of application you might create an actor. Mm -hmm. Is this one of the uh, predefined uh, libraries? In fact, this is not. This is one of the sample programs that we distribute to our customers uh, on an as-needed basis. Mm -hmm. But it's a good sample of what you can do in actor. Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this off to the side, and I'm going to bring up our browser window, uh, which is similar to the Smalltalk one, and it allows us to look at our code. I'm going to scroll down to the chart classes, uh -huh. and you can see the hierarchical mm -hmm. relationship between the charts chart is the superclass, and it has three descendants mm -hmm. uh, of different types of charts. So those can all inherit the properties of chart. Exactly. Yeah. Now I'm going to highlight the chart class, and we're going to bring up the draw routine. It actually shows us the source code right down here. You can see it's a fairly traditional syntax. What I'm going to do quickly is add in a line of code that just brings up what we call an error box or a dialog box, and it's going to say, hello, world. And we can do that in about one line of code. We click on Accept, and that compiles in. And now, as soon as I go back to my chart window and it starts mm -hmm. to redraw, I get the Hello World, win Hello World dialog box. Mm -hmm. And I've out now actually changed the program. Right. So there's a good introduction to the, win the uh, Actor environment. And I'd like to quickly show you a sample program yeah. written in Actor. I'll delete that file I just created. And this is a program called Astro. It was developed uh, by physics pro professors at the University of Maryland, and it's used by courseware in a physics course. Really a non-programmer Exa doing this. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, Windows is known for having a fairly complicated programming environment, and they were able to do this with, uh, uh, with not that much work. And That's a little astronomy see, uh, tutorial there. The scroll bar on the bottom, yeah. what does that do? That uh, would actually increase the speed, so hold on, and we'll uh, send That's the solar right. system <laughs> into, into a whirl. <laughs> Um, this also has a help system built in, and people can scroll through it. Uh -huh. So this gives That's you an great. idea of an actual uh, final program that was developed in Actor. Bruce, thank you very much.